This is a report on our college, Sweetbriar College. This is a report of a year, 1956, a milestone year in the life and progress of our college. These are home movies, prepared as an informal 50th anniversary newsreel of special interest to the alumni, parents, and friends of Sweetbriar. Our report actually begins in June 1955, when Sweetbriar celebrated an important day of progress in its 50th anniversary effort to raise two and a half million dollars for buildings and endowment. It was commencement, June 5th, 1955, and the class of 55 had the honor of combining their commencement program with the groundbreaking for the first major new building at Sweetbriar in 25 years. This was a picturesque and memorable day made inspiring by the presentation of a litany, especially written for the occasion by Dr. and Mrs. Wallace E. Rollins and read by President Ann Gary Pinnell. In everyone's heart and mind was the picture of a structure that was to be, the structure we started to build on that historic day in June 1955 our fine new William Blandew dormitory, much needed, designed to harmonize with the sweet briar we know, and made possible by the generosity of people everywhere who know and love the college. A fitting tribute to William Blandew, faithful treasurer of Sweetbriar College from 1906 to 1942. First to break ground was Mrs. William Blandew, long known by Sweetbriar students as a warm and ever gracious friend. Then came her son, Mr. William Blandew, Jr. And her daughter, and a Sweetbriar alumna, Mrs. Polly Carey Dew Woodson, of the class of 1926. For the campus community, we had Dean Mary J. Pearl, Chairman of the Dormitory Planning Committee, and Mr. Noble Gilpin, Chairman of the Student Faculty Staff Development Program, which secured gifts from 100% of those who live, work, and study at Sweetbriar. Expert at wielding the golden shovels were two alumni members of the Board of Overseers, Mary Huntington Harrison and Julius Sadler de Colony. Sweetbriar's busy development committee for the Lynchburg Amherst County hometown area was represented by its chairman and also a member of the Board of Overseers, Mr. Lawson W. Turner. For parents everywhere, we had as a participant Mr. James R. Stockton, Parents Advisory Board member from Jacksonville, Florida. An honored participant, known for almost two decades of devoted service to Sweetbriar, President Emeritus, Mita Glass whose monumental contributions to the strength and educational prestige of the college are basic to the sweet briar we know today. And then finally, President Ann Gary Pinnell took shovel in hand to turn a ceremonial spadeful of earth for, as she said, the thousands of alumni, parents, and friends who were not in actual attendance that day, but who had worked and who continue to work to make possible this and other happy, auspicious days for Sweetbriar. Symbolic of the loyalty and determination of Sweetbriar people everywhere, the wonderful announcement on that joyous occasion, Sweetbriar's first million dollar day. As of June 5, 1955, the college development program had reached its first important milestone in our progress 
toward the two and a half million dollar goal. History had been made. A new precedent had been established. We had proof that it could be done and would be finished. After the formal groundbreaking, everyone present was invited to help break ground. And countless alumni did just that. And now they can say, in no uncertain terms, that they helped to build Sweetbriar's first 50th anniversary building. Many miles from this place of quiet loveliness, this campus home for the Sweetbriar family, our alumni, parents, and friends in faraway places were also convinced that the Million Dollar Day was only the beginning. They set out to work in their home communities from coast to coast to share the exciting news of Sweetbriar's progress, needs, and uniquely effective program of liberal arts education for women. Some of the Speak Up for Sweetbriar events were large with hundreds in attendance. Others were small, but all were fun. Here we see the gathering in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where friendship, loyalty, and Sweetbriar talk were combined for a highly successful event, long to be remembered by the alumni, their husbands, their parents, and everyone else in attendance. Another high point was a special day in the country sponsored by the Cleveland, Ohio alumni at Malabar Farm. Thanks to the generosity and interest of their host and a member of Sweetbriar's Council of Honorary Sponsors, the late Louis Bromfield, well-known novelist who made Malabar Farm both a place of beauty and a challenging experiment in modern farming methods. It could almost have been a day on Sweetbriar's own country campus and everybody had a good time. The day's fun at Malabar Farm paid off too, in dollars and cents, for Sweetbriar's 50th anniversary development program. Over 70 such events have been held, from London, England, to Honolulu, Hawaii. And here are some of the group who gathered from far and wide in Sweetbriar's name, there in Honolulu, on September 11th, 1955, to hear about the job being done and to speak up for Sweetbriar, many thousands of miles from the blue Virginia hills. As he read President Pennell's special letter to the group, Bishop Wilburn C. Campbell helped complete a worldwide project whereby thousands of Sweetbriar people were given a first-hand look at Sweetbriar 56. Back at Sweetbriar, progress in this 50th year went ahead quietly, day by day, as usual in the classrooms, library, laboratories, but there was something added, a spirit of common endeavor, keen anticipation, the spirit of 56. President Pennell and Dr. Connie M. Guyon, a member of Sweetbriar's early faculty and now a distinguished member of the Board of Overseers and Chairman of the Board's Development Committee, are seen here as they visited the site of the Garden Cottage during its restoration. Originally the office of the farm manager of Sweetbriar Plantation, later the bookshop and tea room, this old house has been completely rebuilt to serve as the home of Sweetbriar's alumni secretary. Hurricane Hazel hit Sweetbriar with its full fury. Thanks to splendid teamwork, no member of the community was injured, but some of Sweetbriar's most beautiful trees were lost, nearly a thousand in all. But most of them, fortunately in wooded areas, away from the main campus, where they will not be too badly missed. During the past three years, Sweetbriar has made important progress in a new program of planned maintenance of the campus plant. Many long overdue behind the scenes improvements are involved. Here we see the work which was necessary to guarantee a long and useful life for Fletcher Hall, which houses both classrooms and administrative offices. Those who live, work, and learn at Sweetbriar have done a lot to spark the development program 
On such occasions as this one, student leaders reported their progress. They turned in generous gifts from students, faculty, and staff to development leader Sally Schallenberger Brown, who, as our first general chairman, worked wisely and well to start the ball rolling for the development program. The actual construction of William Blandu Dormitory was a constant inspiration to everyone on the campus, always a symbol that it can be done. The cornerstone laying ceremony for the dormitory was enjoyed by students, faculty, overseers, and special guests. To commemorate the occasion, present-day college documents, newspapers, a model of a 1956 automobile, lists of donors, historical souvenirs, and even one of Mr. Dew's own briar pipes were all deposited with due ceremony for all time and for all posterity in the copper box of the cornerstone. The latch string is always out at Sweetbriar House. A special guest there during recent months came to the campus to address several hundred business leaders of Virginia on the important matter of support by business and industry for private colleges such as Sweetbriar. And he represented a corporation that is among the pacemakers in this field, Mr. Benjamin F. Fairless of the United States Steel Corporation. Besides her busy life as First Lady of Sweetbriar and her full routine of administrative duties, Mrs. Pennell somehow found time to visit Sweetbriar's junior year in France group in Paris and other French cities. While there, she helped with the important study being made to evaluate that part of Sweetbriar's international program and to plan for its continued effectiveness in the future. The 1956 commencement season was made memorable by Sweetbriar's biggest alumni reunion ever. Alumni from the class of 1910, Sweetbriar's first graduates were on hand to renew old friendships. They reminisced about Sweetbriar's early days, donned caps and gowns again, combined their efforts with plans to assure, in the words of President Eisenhower's commencement greeting, an even finer second half century for Sweetbriar. Grand time was had by all, and only too soon. It was time for fond farewells at the Sweetbriar Station. The past summer months enabled the workmen to put the finishing touches on the new dormitory. Committees of faculty, students, and alumni worked long hours to design it and furnish it, to make it just the way it should be, a comfortable and up-to-date student residence hall of which we can all be highly proud. In the late summer quiet of August, the furniture was uncrated, and the committee made a final check to be sure that all would be ready for those lucky students, upperclassmen, of course, who are now the proud first occupants of William Blandu Dormitory. Like Dew Hall, there are other things that are new. But just as important to any campus visitor are those things that are old, that always seem to stay about the same. A visit to Sweetbriar House, home of President Ann Gary Pennell. 
a familiar doorway to a freshman reception, a tea for graduating seniors, an alumni conference, or just a friendly talk. It is significant to hear Mrs. Pennell discuss Sweetbriar's future in this very house that was here long before the college opened in 1906. The plantation home of Daisy Williams, the young lady of old Virginia who died at the age of 16 and who is forever memorialized in the busy life of this college which her parents made possible. A college now in its 50th anniversary year, very much the topic of conversation when Sweetbriar alumni talk with President Pennell these days. Throughout 1956, we have been celebrating our golden anniversary year and working very hard to acquire the material wherewithal to ensure, in the words of President Eisenhower's commencement message to us, an even finer second half century for Sweetbriar. Much has been accomplished and we are in sight of our goal. As the college opened its 51st academic session this autumn, 80 girls entered the new William Bland Dew Dormitory, a tangible symbol of the generosity and interest that our 50th anniversary campaign has achieved. But far more important than this first building objective has been the fact that as a result of our campaign, we have twice recently been able to increase faculty and staff salaries. To date, Sweetbriar has received more than a million dollars from various corporations and foundations in response to your generous support, the generous support that has come to us from our parents and alumni and friends of the college. The latest response to your hard work and your generosity was announced at commencement. It was the offer of a conditional grant from the Kresge Foundation of $50,000 if we can secure $100,000 in additional funds to endow a chair of religion in honor of Dr. Wallace Rollins, our first chaplain, professor of religion, and longtime resident of Sweetbriar. I don't have to tell you how pleased all of us have been, particularly Dr. and Mrs. Rollins, by the way in which Sweetbriar alumni and former students of Dr. Rollins at the Virginia Theological Seminary are responding to this challenge. It's fun for friends such as Dean Pearl to stop by their home on Elijah Road, visit with Dr. and Mrs. Rollins, and share the happy news about the gifts received each day from those who would thus honor Dr. Rollins and strengthen our work in religion by an endowed professorship. In these final months of Sweetbriar's golden anniversary year, all of us can demonstrate by our belief, by our hard work, and by our sacrificial giving, our belief in our college. Remember that Sweetbriar's development campaign is merely a way to perpetuate the high ideals and the noble traditions of the college we all love.